After decades of planning, fundraising, and building, the Michigan Animal Rescue League has finally completed its new 15,000 square foot facility in Pontiac. And while a public celebration has been put on hold due to the pandemic, the animals are definitely celebrating right now. And joining us to talk to us a little bit more about the excitement going on over at the Michigan Animal Rescue League is McGee Hume. She's the executive director for the Michigan Animal Rescue League. My apologies for calling you Maggie. I'm so used to it, happens all the time. No apology necessary. <laughs> So uh, I've been to your old facility numerous times. Mm -hmm. I've dropped off donations to your temporary location uh, yeah. there in Pontiac. It took me a while to find it. Yeah, um, yeah. We were so tucked away. <laughs> very tucked away. I was yeah. like, where is it? But I'm so excited uh, for you and everyone over there at Marl and this new facility. Tell us a little bit about it. Thank you. Well, you know, we're we're excited too and we appreciate all the excitement from you and everyone in the community because it's been it's been a long time coming as you mentioned. Um I remember when I started at Michigan Animal Rescue League about 12 years ago, we were talking about it then. Um, and as you know, Ronnie, we've been um, serving the animals in the community um, from this same corner um, at the corner of Featherstone and MLK and Pontiac since 1953. Um, so we've got deep roots in the community and, and we've been here a long time and our um, original facility was actually a home at one point and then it just, um, there were several additions put on and um, you know, we did the best we could out of that facility. We did some great work there, but as an organization, we knew we wanted to help more animals. There's a demand in the community for the services that we provide. Um, we wanted to be able to help more and provide a higher level of care. So it's been on our radar for a long time to be able to make this jump to this new facility. So we, we couldn't be more excited as an organization. Talk about the fundraising. Uh, and how, where did the funds come from? Because it's not cheap to no. build a facility. No, it's it's not. It's um, I mean, an animal shelter, there's a lot of, you know, we like to talk about all the cool and fun things that we have, the indoor outdoor kennels and the heated floors, but there's a lot of, you know, operational things that go into a shelter that aren't the most exciting, but they are expensive. You know, we have to think about disease control and drainage and um, air quality and air exchanges. So it, it is expensive. It was about a six, $6.4 million project for us. And, you know, Marl has always been fortunate that we have a very generous donor base and we're lucky um, that the community supports what we do. Um, we did have one donor in particular who stepped forward and said, you know, I want to see this happen. It's a um, a donor who believes in our mission. He had adopted an animal from us and he said, let's do this, let's make it happen. And we talked with some other donors and um, we were able to make it happen. And, you know, it was a truly a team effort. We couldn't do it without the donors. We had, you know, an amazing leader for our project. We had a great um, architect firm. We worked with Ply Plus out of Ann Arbor and they really helped us sort of bring this this vision to life to kind of combine all the tactical things that we need in the facility, but also making it beautiful and welcoming and all the you know natural light and all the fun things that we wanted for the animals. Um, and then we also worked with um, Frank Rewald and Sons. They were our builder out of Rochester. And again, they were great to work with. They all, everybody together just made this dream a reality. It's so exciting. A lot of animal shelters, actually saw an increase of adoptions during the uh, pandemic. Did you over there at Morrow experience that as well? Definitely, yeah. There was, I think it was, a, you know, across the country when we talked to our counterparts, it seemed that there were a lot of households that, you know, with lockdowns and with people being home more, working from home more, it, it seemed like the right time for a lot of households to want to foster and adopt. Um, some of that is, has tapered off, you know, a little bit, but um, yeah, there definitely was a, a spike in adoptions and um, foster homes. And so where do things stand right now? Your facility is open, mm -hmm. and um, but you had to withhold doing your public celebration. Yeah, you know, that's been a little bit of a, um, it's it's a little ironic after all these years of trying to get 
get this done. And then, you know, we all sort of internally had this, you know, 2020 is going to be a great year. And, um, you know, it did delay construction briefly, but we were fortunate that we were still able to complete the project um, in 2020. Um, we did have to, we do our biggest fundraiser of the year is in the spring, our Yappy Hour event. We did have to um, pivot a little bit and turn that into a virtual and online fundraiser. Um, and, you know, now that we're in the building, we're not able to sort of make that big splash and invite, you know, we want to invite all those donors that made it happen and the community that supports us. We want to invite everybody in and, um, you know, we wanted to have an event and celebrate, but we're, um, we're focused now on the animals like that's got to always stay our number one focus and we have not closed our doors to animal care or to the community that needs us since the pandemic started. Um, the needs of the animals never went away, so neither did we. Um, we're inviting people in by appointment only. Um, we do still have a team of staff and we have volunteers coming in um, on specific shifts. You know, it's not the usual hustle bustle that, that we're used to, especially this time of year. People are always coming in with donations and, you know, adoptions are always do well this time of year. Um, it's a little, it's a little quieter, but we're focused on animal care. Um, and that's really because if, you know, if we have an incident or an outbreak, we need a team here to care for these animals seven days a week. So we've got to be extra careful and make sure that we have a full staff. So we do adoptions, we do intakes, um, and we're providing support through our community outreach program. And we do it all um, through appointment, which actually has been kind of nice. The, um, the appointment process, particularly for adoptions, is really nice that we're able to kind of roll out the red carpet and really spend time with each individual potential adopter. So that's kind of worked out well for us. How many animals do you have in the shelter right now that need homes? Well, so we have in the shelter right now, I bet you we're probably at about 120 animals, probably 130. Um, not all of them are available for adoption. You know, a lot of times animals will arrive at our doors and sometimes, you know, it's a few days to a week and they're boom, they're ready for adoption. You know, they don't need a lot. Some of them um, require some pretty extensive medical care or they need a little more time to kind of decompress from whatever they've been through, wherever they've been. So um, we always tend to have more waiting for adoption than available for adoption. But we get, you know, new animals in every day. You can always see our adoptable animals on our website. Um, we encourage everyone to check out the website and fill out an application ahead of time. And then we'll call and schedule an appointment so you can come in and meet with any animals that interest you. Yeah, and, and with that, uh, Mickey, because we have a rescue dog that we got last January. Um, and she's still <laughs> adapting. <laughs> Let's just say that. She's going yeah. through a lot of training. But there has to be a, somewhat of an emotional um, part to the animals during this process as well. And I would think for them to be in a brighter place and a happier place for them, it can help with that transition. Yeah, that's exactly it. So like I mentioned before, sort of the quality of the weight. Um, you know, we are fortunate that we're not just throwing an animal in a cage and calling it good and they're waiting for an adopter. You know, we're working with these animals. We're helping them, you know, retain or, or in some cases regain their ability to connect with people. That's important because we don't always know where they've been, what they've been through. If they could talk, it would be a lot easier. Um, or if they all came with a little instruction manual so we could kind of follow where they've been or what they've been through, what they, what kind of care they haven't received. Um, so it takes time and, and we, we give our animals the solace of that time. You know, they're not on the clock when they come in. If they need a lot of time and they need, you know, slow introductions to new people, our staff and volunteers are gonna give them that time. And, um, you know, having the natural light for the animals, all of that, you know, emotionally when animals are, are well, it tends to affect their physical health as well. And, you know, we want these animals to be ready for adoption. So, you know, the, the new facility gives them, um, you know, the indoor outdoor access in our dog kennel yard for the dogs to have choice of environment 24 hours a day and to be able to go outside and get fresh air and, you know, our new kennels, um, they don't face each other sort of like that old traditional like 
animal could like that old dog kennel kind of um you know where the kennels are like this ours um look out into an open air courtyard where they can see snow and birds and rain and it's just much more natural for them and and we could tell right away the minute we moved the animals in we could tell that they were doing well in this environment it's a much lower stress environment than what we were dealing with before. Um, and for the cats to be able to do what's natural for them, that's what we wanna be able to provide them. So can they perch, can they climb, can they hide? Are they getting sunlight? You know, some, and when we talk about individual care, you know, some cats are very social and they wanna be around people. Others wanna, you know, they want their privacy. They want their time away. And, you know, we don't wanna force any animal. We want them to be able to come around in their own in their own time. And the space in this building and the flexibility that we've created in this building allows us to do that for each animal. Yeah, hey, cats are very unique <laughs> in that regard, aren't they? Are. They are. <laughs> they are. And, and with that, uh, even though you have a great new facility, I'm sure that uh, donations are always needed and always appreciated. I know a lot of other animal rescues right now, they're always looking for towels and blankets, things of that nature. What is on your wish list there at the Michigan Animal Rescue League? That's a great question. So yeah, towels and blankets, we can always use cleaning supplies, paper towels, things like that. Um, you know, cat food, kitten food, we have a wish list on our website um, that we're constantly updating. And there's times even that we'll do a post on social media that says we really need kitten food or we really need puppy food. And um, the great thing now about, you know, the way the, the world works is um, anyone that wants to support can just order something off of our Amazon wish list and send it right to the shelter. They don't even have to leave their home to be able to help. And that's a really sort of real time way for us to say we need this and then supporters can help and provide it directly to the animals. So, you know, donations of, of all kinds are, are um, important, you know, now more than ever with, you know, we're still seeing lots of animals coming to our doors. There's no shortage of that right now. So we're here every day um, working hard and you know we need the support of the community to be able to provide this kind of care for these animals. Monkey Humes with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Just another couple of minutes with you. We are going into the holiday season and some people do get pets for as gifts for individuals, but I would imagine sometimes those pets also end up coming back to you. So do you have any tips for people who are thinking about getting another, uh, a furry addition to their family for the holiday season, or maybe thinking of getting one for, uh, you know, like a mother or a father or, or a loved one? Sure. Yeah. So we, um, you know, our adoption process really um, deters sort of the impulse by or the sight unseen um adoption we really think that um you know there's a bond between an animal and its its future family and so our process um requires everyone in the household to meet with the animal ahead of time and you'll be surprised sometimes a a household or family will come in and they'll be interested and they think for sure they want this dog and then they spend some time with a couple others and they think okay maybe this is more of a fit for us so um you know we never we don't recommend um animals as as surprise gifts i mean it's a lovely gesture um you know people if they wanted to give a gift to a family member but we would recommend the gift being the adoption process so that they can be a part of it because animals are, you know, dogs and cats and pets are a responsibility. They're a financial commitment, they're a time commitment, uh, and it's a lifelong commitment. We never want to see, um, you know, an animal come back. So while I, I think, and some, you know, for some people, I'll be honest, sometimes during the holidays is a good time to bring an animal into your home. People are home from work, kids are home from school. Maybe you've got a little extra time, you know, it's, it's up to every, family individually but what's important is that you really thought about it you're really ready for this commitment and that everyone in the household gets to be a part of deciding what animal you're going to bring in because you're all going to be sharing your lives with this animal for a really long time so it's important that everybody you know feels the same and, and feels good about it and so with that when you say it's a family affair adopting a new friend into the family. Do you allow for people with pets already in their home to bring those pets into the shelter to get to know the other animals? 
Absolutely. So dogs, we, we generally will require a meet and greet with um, the dogs too, because that's important too. Like your dog is a member of your family, right? And, you know, sometimes dogs, you know, may get along with certain dogs, but not others. So we found, you know, it's less of a, um, it's more, our process is really conversational and we really are trying to serve both the adopter and the animal. We wanna make sure it's the right fit for everybody involved. We don't want an adopter to take an animal home and then have to go through the grief of two weeks later saying, you know, my dog just can't get used to it. My, we are gonna have to bring this dog back. That's not only hard on the animal, but that's not the kind of adoption experience that we want for our potential adopters. So. Yes, we absolutely require that they bring their dogs in and, and we'll make accommodations. We can do the meetings outside. We've, you know, gone to other locations if it's a dog that's really scared to, to come to the shelter or, you know, we'll make accommodations because it's important to see them meet. And, and our staff is really well trained in sort of identifying, okay, even if it's not love at first sight between the two dogs, it doesn't have to be. It just, we want to make sure that, you know, it looks like the things are going to work out and this is going to be a safe um a safe situation. Yeah. So years ago, I think it was, um, I was working for Fox too, and I did an interview and a story with, uh, I think they were puggles, the black <laughs> dogs that came from a hoarding situation in Detroit yeah. and they were so cute. Yeah. And we had a rescue Cocker Spaniel at the time and brought her in. And uh, she was like, no, no, yeah. this puppy is not coming home. Yeah. And, and so, and so I, I'm sure someone else adopted the beautiful little dog because they were so adorable. But he yeah. ended up being a single doggy uh, for her entire life. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> She was spoiled. And now it's like you said, though, we have a new rescue, Trixie, and she thinks she's my husband's girlfriend, by the way. Oh, she just, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. Just, she's warming up to me, but uh, definitely <laughs> um, she is Woody's girlfriend. She's like, look, human, no. <laughs> But they all have their personalities. So oh, yeah. again, though, you guys, I'm so excited for you to have that new facility. You all deserve it because you do so much for the community and so much for all the animals uh, in the Pontiac area as well. Um, you've been a lifeline to so many animals there. So congratulations Thank on your new you. facility. And again, if anyone has anything they want to donate, or if you want to make a donation maybe for the holiday season in someone's name just go to amazon or on your facebook page they can get that information yeah yeah we have a really cool holiday giving guide on our um on our website where you can do um gifts you know in someone's name you can print out a photo of the of the animal that you've made the gift in honor of so you could check that out oh that's a good way to do it so that mm -hmm. you actually have something to present to someone yeah yeah well Best of luck to you and your team. You. McGee Humes with us. She's the executive director for the Michigan Animal Rescue League uh, there in Pontiac. They've been a part of the community since 1953, and they have done so much good over the years um, helping the animals of Pontiac. So, McGee, thank you so much, and uh, happy holidays to you, you and uh, your entire team over there. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks so much for having me.